Hello, this is Pastor David Charlton. This is my Bible study for Wednesday, August the 18th, 2020. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 138. I will give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. What does this psalm teach us about history? The psalm is attributed to David, but some scholars think it was recorded at a later date, after the time of the exile. David thanks, quote, the Lord. Whenever you find the word Lord in capital letters in the Old Testament, this is a sign that the actual Hebrew word being translated is Yahweh, the name of God revealed to Moses. Before the gods could mean one of three things. The kings of the other nations, the heavenly beings surrounding God's throne, or the false gods of the pagan nations. David would not have bowed toward the temple because it had not yet been built. He would have bowed toward the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. A person living in Jerusalem would have bowed toward the temple from within the temple courts. An, ex an exile living in Babylon would have bowed in the, in, in the direction of the temple in Jerusalem. What do we learn about Christ? We know that Jesus knew the Psalms by heart and that he often used them in prayer. Like most Jews of his day, he believed that the Psalms expressed the identity and the mission of the Messiah. In the same way, early Christians believed that the Psalms spoke of Jesus Christ. What does this Psalm show us about Jesus' mission? His mission is to make his heavenly Father known to all nations. By word and action, Jesus reveals who the God of Israel truly is and how he differs from the gods of the nations. God is mo known most of all as the one who is full of steadfast love and faithfulness. He answers prayer and strengthens the souls of those who are weak. He helps the lowly and overturns those who are proud. God watches over and protects those who serve him. His purpose is always accomplished in his servants. Most of all, Jesus revealed God's true character in his own death and resurrection. There we find out that God truly is faithful and that he does care for his servants. What does this teach us about discipleship? The New Testament teaches that we are called to be witnesses. Psalm 138 is a good model for how we are to witness to what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. David testifies to what God has done for him answering prayer, reviving his soul, preserving his life, delivering him. David also testifies to his confidence that God will continue to care for him in the future. We are called to do the same. 
testifying for what God has done for us, so that even the powerful will come to worship and praise God. What do we learn here about heaven? As I mentioned yesterday, heaven can mean several things. It can mean the sky, the spiritual realm, or the place where God reigns. The spiritual realm, meaning number two, is ambiguous. It includes angels who serve God, but it also includes demonic forces that oppose God. However, those who believe in Jesus Christ know that he has been exalted above every human or spiritual power. Through him we have direct access to the Father. We do not need to bow down in fear to any earthly or heavenly power, but only to God. Let us pray. God of all creation, you reach out to call people of all nations to your kingdom. As you gather disciples from near and far, count us also among those who boldly confess your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord. Amen.